ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुतिर जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण एंड प्रणाम्स टू ऑल द एसेंबल्ड वैष्णवस टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू श्री अनंत पद्मनाभ जी टेम्पल इन केरला त्रिवेंद्रम दैट इज द लास्ट सिटी इन इंडियन मैप डाउन साउथ and further crossing trivandrum then we will be reaching sri lanka so we welcome you all devotees to this holy town and the holy temple organized by rg media online yatra so welcome and this holy place thiru anantapuram that's what traditionally it's named as is mentioned in uh, six puranas out of 18 puranas original name of the city trivandrum in puranas is shyanandurapura shyanandurapura means the place where lord eternally resting or sleeping shyana shyanandurapura where lord enjoys his sleep so as per scriptures lord is eternally performing some pastimes in different holy tirthas for example in jagannath puri lord is always having uh, his meal you know always enjoying food and in badrinath lord is always meditating in dwaraka lord is always ruling so like this in each and every holy place lord is eternally performing some pastime in the same way in tiruvananthapuram trivandrum shyanandurapura lord is eternally resting so it seems once in 6 years lord will turn from his left side to right side then rest then another 6 years he will turn from right side to his left side and rest so this place is always a resting place one of the famous acharya he commented he said if i want to take rest i will prefer going to shyanandurapura and resting because lord is also resting there so it's a beautiful 1000 year old temple built by major portion of this temple was built by kulashekra maharaja one among the 12 alvars of shri santradhai so even today some major portion of this temple is named under raja kulashekra kulashekra raja was once upon a time the ruler of uh, travancur the trivandrum city and he wrote the famous mukundamala stotra from the city so first let us go to this temple it's a beautiful temple and the temple is situated in nayan acres ground in the in the heart of the town it's a perfect square place and the whole area of the temple is nayan acre and in the middle lord is residing under a golden tomb and you know now this trivandrum ananta padmanabh ji temple is the has got the richest treasure in the world i don't know how you calculate it it is one followed by 12 zeros grams of gold i don't know how much it is one followed by 12 zeros grams of gold 
is lying under Sri Padmanabh Ji. And Sri Padmanabh Ji is lying on top of this huge treasure. You know, it's an amazing temple, very beautiful, ornated prakaras. And you can see wonderful piece of architecture in this temple. The history is connected to many, many great saints, right from Shankaracharya, Madhvacharya, Ramanujacharya had visited this temple, Pandavas have visited this place. When Kurukshetra battle was going on, Balram came and stayed, stayed here. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came. Then uh, Nityananda Prabhu came. Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur came. Many, many wonderful personalities, including Vyasadev, they all have visited this place. So it's an amazing place. And the glories of Sri Anant Padmanabh Ji states, if a person simply sleeps in this town overnight, his going back to Godhead is guaranteed. So such a wonderful place. That is Sri Anand Padmanabh's holy abode and we welcome all the devotees here. The history of this temple is connected to the great Vilvamangal Thakur. It says it is Vilvamangal and some other scripture says it is Divakar Muni. However, a sage, a holy devotee, a pure devotee is connected to the pastime of this temple. In Kerala, there are many, many saints who were called Vilva Mangal. When we Gaudiya Vaishnavas, when we say Vilva Mangal, we refer to Leela Sukha, the author of Sri Krishna Karnamrita, Vilva Mangal Thakur, who became blind, who stayed in Vrindavan. But then what happened? Vilva Mangal Thakur traveled the whole of South India. And he initiated many, many disciples into bhakti. And all the sages, all the sannyasi saints, they got the surname Vilvamangal. It is, so the Vilvamangal name has become something like a Sampradaya name. Like in Iskon, we have Bhakti as the surname for sannyasis. Some other Sampradayas has got Saraswati, Puri, so in Kerala, especially South Karnataka and Kerala, there are many, you go to any temple, all the famous Guruvayur temple, UDP temple, you travel to any famous temple in South India, they have this uh, surname, you know, Vilva Mangal. So we don't know which Vilva Mangal Thakur is connected to Sri Ananta Padmanabh Ji, but the story... Uh, goes in such a way where uh, we can understand it is mostly our Vilva Mangal Thakur, but there is no exact reference to this. So, Vilva Mangal Thakur, and you know he was blind and he was in Vrindavan and um, Krishna was assisting him. They had an intimate, intense relationship with the Supreme Lord. And Lord was assisting Vilva Mangal Thakur all the time. You know, washing his garments and cooking for him, doing all kinds of uh, menial assistance. That's amazing, you know. So sometimes we wonder whether the Lord is serving his devotee or the devotees are serving the Lord. And it looks like a transcendental competition between both of them. Devotee is also taking care of the Lord and serving the Lord. And the Lord is also serving the devotee. And it looks like Lord won, wins the competition. And Vilva Mangal Thakur didn't realize that this boy who is serving me is the Supreme Person. And he was doing all, Krishna was performing all kinds of menial services for Vilva Mangal Thakur. At the same time, we all know Krishna is very naughty also. You know, Krishna is very naughty. So it seems even once Vilva Mangal Thakur put Krishna inside a box and kept him closed, you know, because this boy was very naughty. So, you know, Vilva Mangal Thakur dropped him in some kind of a box and closed him for some time. And this is how, and how much ever 
Vilva Mangal Thakur advised this boy, Krishna. Krishna never corrected himself. Lord was purposely doing mischiefs and all kinds of nakara and uh, Vilva Mangal Thakur. Vilva Mangal Thakur actually didn't realize this is Supreme Lord, so he was uh, getting a bit disturbed. So one day, Vilva Mangal Thakur has uh, written something on the palm leaves. So sometimes devotees may wonder, he was blind, then how he composed songs and scriptures. Many, many scriptures Vilva Mangal Thakur composed, even though he was blind. And the famous one is Sri Krishna Karnamrita. And Lord Chaitanya liked it so much. So when, uh, when Vilva Mangal Thakur composed some, something on the palm leaves, Naughty Krishna came and tore it off or you know threw it off. Then Vilva Mangal Thakur became very upset. So Vilva Mangal Thakur gave a pat, you know, very affectionately he gave a pat and said, why are you troubling me so much? I don't need you. When you are there, I, I'm not getting any kind of help. Rather, I'm getting disturbed a lot. You're troubling me so much. I don't want to see you. You please leave this place. When Vilva Mangal Thakur chased Krishna, Krishna said, I am going. I am leaving. And even if you call, I won't come back. Then Vilva Mangal Thakur said, yes, yes, I don't need you. You go. You get lost. I don't want to see you. I don't want you have you be here. Then Krishna said, okay, I'm going. And if at all you feel that you should see me, you want to meet me, you come down to South India. And he gave an address. He said, uh, you know, come to Anantavan. You know, there is a one, Vana, Anantavana. You come to Anantavana, then you can meet me there in South India. Vilva Mangal Thakur said, no, 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 I don't want to see you. You know, you go, I don't want to see you. If at all you want to see me, you come down to Anantavana. You know, Krishna gave the address and Krishna left. When Krishna left, Vilva Mangal Thakur started feeling the separation. He was feeling restless. He was feeling uneasy because Lord has completely captured his heart. And Lord was physically present with Vilva Mangal Thakur, interacting with him every day and night. And their relationship was so intense. You know, when Acharya is glorifying, Krishna is as old as sun and as new as sunshine. Like in Brahma Samhita, we have this line, you know, uh, what is that? Yam Shyama Sundaram Machintya Gunasvarupam. And there is one more line. He is very old, Purana. At the same time, he is very new also. So Krishna is as old as sun and as new and fresh as sunshine. And Vilva Mangal Thakur was heart was completely captured by this devotion to Krishna. And when Krishna left, he started feeling uneasy. He was feeling emptiness. He was feeling uncomfortable. Then slowly Vilva Mangal Thakur realized it was the Supreme Lord who was interacting with me, playing with me, talking to me, helping me. And he was even doing... Uh, assistance and menial activities for me. How sinful I am that I didn't realize the presence of the Lord. And I chased him. How many times I have spoken heavy words to him, cruel words, and he was repenting and he was feeling so bad and he was again and again blaming himself. Then the desire to meet the Lord again. You know, he was feeling, Vilva Mangal Thakur was feeling, I should meet the Lord again. I should go and see him. Uh, you know, that desire started increasing so much in his heart. So he set his journey down South India. The blind Vilva Mangal Thakur. Vilva Mangal Thakur originally is from Karnataka. So the blind Vilva Mangal Thakur again set his journey to South India in search of Krishna. So he has just only one line, you know, that the address says he can meet Krishna in Anantavana. That's all he knew. He knew and uh, no much detail. 
So throughout something like the Shadgo Swamis, you know, they were searching for Krishna all the time. Hey Radhe, hey Vrajadevi ke chalalite, hey Nanda Suno, Putaha, where are you Krishna? Where are you Radharani? Where are you Gopis? Like the Goswamis were searching in the grooves of Vrindavan. Uh, Vilva Mangal Thakur started searching for Krishna and traveling from one place to another and asking. And nobody knew where this Anantavana is. So he traveled the whole length of Bharata Varsha, the whole length of this country and came to extreme south of India. You know, and he came down and he was roaming around asking everyone whom he met. And they all said, no, no, we don't know Anantavana. We don't know Anantavana. Then this blind Vilva Mangal Thakur, when he was traveling, he heard a lady singing lullaby to trying to put her son to sleep. This lady has in the, in the field, in the paddy field, the lady had tied a cloth to the tree and her baby is sleeping in the cloth and she's swinging and she's singing to the boy saying that if you don't sleep, I will tie you in Anantavana. You know, she used that line. She sang very beautifully singing, saying that, Oh, my dear Lala, oh, my dear son, if you don't sleep in time, I will tie you in Anantavana. And suddenly Vilva Mangal Thakur heard this line. You know, he came to, oh, Anantavana. Immediately he caught hold and he went and begged that lady and asked, where is this Anantavana? And that lady said, you go extreme south of this country, close to the ocean. There is a beautiful jungle which belongs to Lord Anantasesh, you know, and there is Ananta's reference in that place, and that is Anantvana. So Vilva Mangal Thakur, you know, became so jubilant and so ecstatic, his hairs were standing on the end. He was jumping and dancing and he came to this particular place. When he came down there and he was singing beautiful songs for Krishna and begging forgiveness, Krishna, forgive me. I did so many mistakes. I chased you. I scolded you. Please. And he was crying with tears with his raised arms. When, when Vilva Mangal Thakur sang, a tree, a huge tree, the tree broke into two. And Vilva Mangal Thakur, the local scriptures, the Mahatmya of uh, Tiruvananthapuram, it says that Vilva Mangal Thakur got his vision. He got his eyes back. He could see. Then he saw beautiful Krishna standing in front of this broken tree, a big tree. And Krishna having nice lotus petaled eyes extended up to the ears. And, you know, eyebrows are all like dolphin. And when Krishna is blinking his eyes, it is going like uh, butterflies. And he has got Makarakundala earring shaped uh, like shark, like fish and his neck like a conch shell, and beautiful lips like a vilva fruit, and Krishna is smiling and playing his flute. And Vilva Mangal Thakur saw this beautiful darshan of Krishna. His body started trembling, and he was singing phrases and songs, and uh, you know he wanted to offer something, and he saw a small uh, dry mango, lying on the floor. So he took that dry mango and he got a coconut shell, coconut shell. So he kept that dry mango in the coconut shell and offered to Krishna. So even today, every day in Sri Anantapadmanabji Mandir, every day morning they offer a dry mango and they get dry mangoes 365 days in a year. And they place it in a golden coconut shell, you know, in, in memory, in remembrance to that Leela. So every day Krishna is taking a raw mango, you know, in a, in a coconut shell. So now they have a golden coconut shell, but they offer raw mangoes every day. So Vilva Mangal Thakur sang beautiful songs 
and offered this mango to Krishna. And Krishna had this uh, fruit. Then he merged in the tree. And the tree fell down with a huge sound. It broke. And it seems the tree was... 18 miles long, something like that, you know, such a long tree, 18 miles long, and Ananta Padmanabhji's deity, you know, the tree got uh, assumed the form of deity, Ananta Padmanabhji, Lord Narayana, Vishnu lying on Ananta, huge deity, and the deity was also 18 miles long, 18 miles long. Then Vilvabangal Thakur started singing the next song, saying, Krishna, how will I have your Padaravinda Darshan? How can I see your lotus feet? How can I see your beautiful face like a moon? How can I see the lotus flower which you are holding in your beautiful arms? Then he sang the next song because it will take days for me to take Darshan because you are 18 miles long. If I start taking darshan from your foot to head, you know, I have to travel up and down. How will I have your darshan? So when he sang the next song, the huge deity shrunk. And it shrunk and it became 18 feet long deity. So even if you come to, uh, when you come to Ananta Padmanabh Ji Mandir today, you can see the deity is 18 feet long. You have to see the deity through three doors, you know. One door you can see Lord's face, one door you can see the middle portion, another door you can see his, uh, you know, it, I think it is one of the longest deity in India, 18 feet long, and there are three doors. You can't take darshan in one single door, you have to take in three different doors. And even today, the place where Lord's head was, and that place is called Tiruvalla, and there is a Parshuramji Mandir. And where his feet was, it is that place is called Tripadapuram, and there Lord's feet is there. So originally the Lord was like 18 miles, then the Lord shrunk into 18 feet. So beautiful, beautiful deity, you know, and the deity is uh, Krishna, the Narayana Vishnu is like uh, looking up in the sky and very artistically holding a lotus flower and something like he's smelling the flower. Then in one hand, he has got chakra, another he has got gada. Then you can see Brahmaji coming out of his navel, then Lakshmiji at his lotus feet. It's like, oh, so beautiful. It's like a painting, huge one on the wall. And the deity covers the whole sanctum sanctorium. You know, that Sri Kovil, what a Garbhagudi, Garbhagraha. He covers the whole, you know, occupies the entire Garbhagraha. Very beautiful deity. And one speciality of this deity today is, the deity is not made out of one stone. Ananta Padmanabhji will, will look like one stone, but it is not uh, one stone. We will be surprised to know 12,000 tiny shalagrams are put together uh, with an Ayurvedic paste, and that's what is the deity. Nobody will believe it. When they see, they see like a black stone deity of Ananta Padmanabhji, but it is not a single deity, not a single stone. 12,000 shalagrams. It's all kept with an Ayurvedic uh, cement, Ayurvedic paste, you know, and it's made. That is why Anand Padmanabhji never gets an Abhisheka. They never do Abhisheka. What they do is every day they, they clean the deity with just a peacock broom, the uh, peacock feathers, that's all. They, they just dust the deity and they will never touch the deity nor clean the. Abhishek do use water because it is just a paste and 12,000 shalagrams are like, you know, uh, put together with the paste. Amazing. We don't see this kind of uh, vigraha anywhere else. 12,000 shalagrams in an Ayurvedic paste, you know. 
So, all almost like six Puranas have glorified this deity, Anant Padmanabhji. And even in Mahabharata, it is mentioned when Kurukshetra battle was going on, Balramji, he didn't take part in Kurukshetra battle. So, he came travel, he traveled south and he came to Anant Padmanabhji Mandir and he stayed for some time in Anant Padmanabhji Mandir. And Ramanuj, as I said, all Acharyas and great personalities, they've all come. And one beautiful thing is, in the main uh, Garbhagruha, that uh, sanctum, that room, deity room, Lord Anant Padmanabhji is lying. And Ananta's one side is touching one end of the wall. And Lord's feet is touching the other end of the wall. That means the deity is touching both ends of the wall. Because of that, no devotee had ever seen what is behind the deity. They have never seen what is behind the deity. Pujari say, many times they can hear the sound of waves. And the deity is something like 5-6 kilometer away from the ocean. But still, the pujaris can hear. They say they always hear the sound of waves. And no, you know, if you want to peep what is on the other side, you have to climb on the deity because the deity is so huge. The deity is like 18 feet long and something like 6-7 feet tall. So no pujari can see what is on the other side. If he has to see, then he has to climb on the deity and they don't do that. Nobody does that. So... The Pujari say they always hear the beautiful sound of waves. So one Pujari, he wanted to know what is actually behind the deity. So he took a ring and tied to thread and he dropped that ring on the other side. You know, the, the ring was going in with no end and he tied, made knots and knots and, and he used so much of thread, so much of bundles of thread but it's still the ring was going deeper and deeper and deeper. After some time, the pujari got tired and he pulled the ring back. You know, he pulled the thing back and there was no ring at the end of the thread. The ring disappeared. After many months, a fisherman, you know, he came to the palace of the king and said, uh, Oh, law, oh, oh, king, I got this ring from a fish, you know. And when I saw the sign of Ananta Padmanabhji temple, I could realize this is something very valuable, so I wanted to return it. Then the king saw this is the head priest ring because it has got the sign of Ananta Padmanabhji. Then he called the head priest. You know, and this story is not some historic story or some Puranic story. This one has happened some few hundred years back, like 100, 150 years back. Then the king summoned the pujari and asked the pujari, you know, what happened to your ring? And the king said, the pujari said, this is what happened. I wanted to know what is on the other side. Then the ring is lost. Then the king said, is this your ring? The pujari said, yes. Your fish had swallowed your ring. That means the deity is connected to the ocean. And from that day, the pujaris became very respective because on the other, other side, they still believe that's ocean. You know, amazing. And they say they hear the sound of waves regularly. And uh, when you take darshan, then you come out of that main sanctum, such a calm, soothing place. As I told, the temple is situated in nine acres ground in the middle, and it's like full of ocean sand everywhere. And there is a traditional Krishna temple. So they locally call it Ambadi Krishna. Ambadi means Gokul. You know, in the, in the local version, it is called Gokul Krishna. And they say this Krishna deity is even more older than Anant Padmanabhji deity. And there's a beautiful standing Krishna. One more interesting thing about the west coast of India, right from Goa up to Cape Comorin, Kanyakumari, there are many Krishna temples. You know, you can take Udupi Sri Krishna temple. Then in Kerala, 
Guruvayur, Tripurayar, Ananta Padmanabh Ji. In the west coast of India, there must be at least some 40 to 50 temples, Krishna temples on the west coast. And all these deities are from Dwarka. The 16,108 wives of Dwarka, they all had personal Krishna deity. Because Krishna married them and Krishna was spending all the time with Pandavas. You know, once even Narada went and asked in Dwarka, where is Krishna? And Rukmini Mata said, I don't know. You know, he's most of the time in jungle, in Hastinapur, with the Pandavas, you know. You know, Krishna is always there spending time with Pandavas. So, the queens actually were worshipping Krishna's deity. Each one of them had a personal deity. Then when Dwaraka disappeared from the material vision, when Dwaraka sank inside the ocean, disappeared into the ocean, the deities floated and came to the west coast of India. And many, many sages like um, Madhvacharya took this deity from the ocean and established that is Udupi. And so many sages established so Anant Padmanabhji also had got a Krishna temple, you know, Krishna deity, and they said that is from Dwarka, a beautiful Krishna temple there. And every day they sit and sing. It's so nice, very traditional. You can see in the evenings and mornings, the local villagers, they come and they all sing songs, glorify Krishna, glorify Anant Padmanabhji. And the evening festival in Anand Manavji, it's so royal. You know, we should see the moment you witness this festival in Anand Manavji Mandir in the evenings, immediately you will be taken centuries back. You know, you will feel like you are in 15th century or 16th century or something like that. The deities, all the three, there are three deities, Anand Manavji, Sri Krishna and Narsing Dev. All the three deities, they come out. Some days they come on a golden palanquin. Some days they come out with on a silver. Some days they come on a kalpavriksha palanquin. You know, there are different kinds of palanquin. Gajavahana, elephant palanquin. Indravahana, Indra's palanquin. You know, kalpavriksha vahana, desire tree palanquin. Lord will come in, you know, different, different palanquins and, you know, and in the front, there are devotees playing all kinds of musical instruments with all shenai and trumpet and mridangas. And people will be very ritualistically chanting mantras. And, you know, they will bow down like servant of the Lord. And the Lord will be majestically, royally going around the temple. And behind the Lord, devotees will be chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra and going. That's an amazing thing. We can see hundreds of devotees every day evening behind Anant Padmanabhji. They chant, you know, Hare Krishna. But, they, you know, traditionally they chant Hare Rama first. But it's uh, whatever it is. It's so beautiful. And they will be chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra and going around, you know, like behind the deity. So beautiful. And, that festi and the festival in the night goes on almost like 40, 45 minutes. Then... The Lord is taken back again into the main temple deity room and the doors are closed. And when the doors are closed, the devotees come and sit outside the door and with the beautiful instruments, they put Lord to sleep. They, they sing. They say, Krishna, you were grazing cows the whole day. Your legs must be tired. So Krishna, please go to sleep. You know, you must be running from your mother. Your mother wanted to feed you butter. But you escaped from her and you were running in the courtyard of Nanda Maharaja's house. Your tender body would be tired. Krishna, please go to sleep. The gopis would have made you dance and dance and dance for their tunes. You would have been tired. Please go to sleep. All the great devas, Sindra, Chandra, Varuna, Vayu, Agni... They must have met you and spoke to you for hours and hours. My Lord, you would be tired. Please go to sleep. So they sing a beautiful, melodious bhajan. 
and and if we know the meaning we can really relish and enjoy it then once the bhajan is over they 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 slowly reduce the volume and they bow down and they walk outside of the temple they don't turn back they don't show their back to their te- deity they walk they walk you know on the reverse they walk reverse you know with bowing their head they walk reverse and as they go out of the main temple the lights are off and slowly they close the temple and they go out so personal that worship is very beautiful very beautiful and very personal you know and they close down the temple and the temple again opens at 4:15 in the morning so all those rituals and pujas they are done very meticulously royally and twice in a year lord goes out he goes out to the ocean for a bath they carry the lord in a palanquin you know on elephant and this happens only in trivandrum nowhere else in the world airport is shut down twice a year when the lord goes to bath because originally where trivandrum airport is that is anand padmanabh ji's playing ground lord's playing ground and the palace people the royal people donated the land to airport authority of india and when they donated the land to airport authority of india they had a condition two days in a year that place should be given for the lord so even today two days in a year half a day the airport is shut all the flights are postponed or preponed or cancelled and lord majestically royally goes through the airport through the runway you know they open the gates and all hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people singing kirtan bhajan and with army protection you know reserve police police on the horses in the front and the police on the horses from behind and with army lord goes on an elephant followed by thousands of devotees going across the airport through the runway and going to the ocean for the bath and airport is closed for that few hours half a day amazing amazing i don't think that this has this can happen in anywhere else in the world you know so lord goes to bath twice a year and and he enjoys his past time and he comes back you know and when we speak about anand padmanabh ji mandir we can never miss king kula shekra and prabhu pad uh, appreciated king kula shekra's mukundamala stotra so much and prabhu pad always used to quote this famous shloka ಕೃಷ್ಣ right now you are enjoying the ambrosial nectar oozing from the lotus feet of krishna and my dear swan you are swimming across you know in between the legs of krishna now i am able to meditate your lotus feet <coughs> so affectionately so lovingly krishna let me leave my body at this very moment because i am able to meditate on my lord so beautifully mukund mala stotra is such a wonderful composition so deep in one shloka kulashekra maharaja saying oh idiot if you are having you know disease you are ailing with health if you are struggling and if you have joint pain my dear idiot don't take medicine krishna rasayanam piba open your ears and simply drink the beautiful nectar 
which is holy name of krishna the amazing book mukundamala stotra so kulashekara maharaja was the erstwhile king of this great city tiruvananthapuram and he was like you know 12 1200 years back kulashekara maharaja ruled travancore and um, even today many portion in this temple is named after the king some places are called kulashekara mandapa and kulashekara you know everything is named under raja kulashekara and the royal symbol of raja kulashekara was kanshal kanshal was his symbol so even today in trivandrum you go to any government offices the secretariat building the collector's house collector's building you go to any library colleges university any building in travancore trivandrum tiruvananthapuram you can see the kanshal that symbol kanshal symbol because raja kulashekara's symbol was kanshal and all the towns in trivandrum district it's all named after the lord you know the places are called shrivaraham balaram balaramapuram vamanapuram rishimangalam you know even today the place where the iskon temple is this town is called balaramapuram so you can all the towns most of the towns in trivandrum is still named after different avatars forms of krishna very beautiful so raja kulashekara ruled tiruvananthapuram and he was uh, worshiping the deity for so many years he was a great ardent uh, intimate intense undivided devotee of lord ramachandra the deity which was worshiped by raja kulashekara is still there in anant padmanabh temple every day morning people can take darshan of the deity you know just for like 15 20 minutes the, the, the deity is not for public darshan only for 15 minutes you can take the darshan of the deity lord ramachandra lakshman hanuman sita devi you know which is a personal deity of raja maharaja kulashekara and such a wonderful person his palace was full with brahmanas and vaishnavas all the time and he used to serve vaishnava so much you know like sanatan goswami was paying 1000 obeisances every day raja kulashekara also had some kind of a system i have to feed so many vaishnavas i have to associate with so many vaishnavas so you go to his palace or inside anant padmanabh ji mandir you go anywhere this flooded with brahmanas and vaishnavas and raja kulashekara was spending all the time with them this irritated the ministers ministers had their own concern if our king is going to spend all the time with these brahmanas and vaishnavas how our king is going to attend to the royal things how he will take care of country how he will manage the country enemies can attack enemies may get the news that the king is inattentive they can attack that will be a threat for the country and this developed some kind of concern in, in within the ministers but no one was had the courage to go and talk to raja kulashekara and raja kulashekara had all these brahmanas and morning to night he was sitting and listening to ramayan bhagavat from the sages and brahmanas and vaishnavas so one day it happened when raja kulashekara was very attentively listening to ramayan and uh, the sages were the rishi brahmanas were reading that that our dear sita sita mata was kidnapped by ravana when raja kulashekara heard this immediately he got up from the place and he screamed and he called his minister and said let us wage a war against lanka you know arrange the army set the army ready let us go so in these kind of these kinds of things were happening with raja kulashekara in the dreams in the dead of the night king will get up and scream and say i'm going to attack ravana i'm going to attack lanka i'm going to and uh, 
this became a big concern for the ministers our our king is going out of control so they thought you know with the family members something we should do and stop the king otherwise this will go out of control so what shall we do the best thing is to chase out all these vaishnavas from the palace and the temple because of their company because of their association our king is becoming like this chase them all out how to chase them king will become very angry so they made a plot they stole the beautiful jewel of lord ramachandra the personal deity of raja kulashekra the lord ramachandra had a beautiful necklace studded with a gold ruby emerald sapphire i am not exaggerating in this temple everything is to do with gold only lord gets abhisheka the smaller deity utsava vigraha gets abhisheka in water the water is carried in a golden pot festival days there are 108 golden pots everything is gold 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 you know so that the necklace which lord ramachandra wore was missing the puja the ministers told that and next day when maharaja kulashekra came in the morning for darshan then he opened the temple then he came for puja then he found out the necklace is missing from lord ramachandra the king became very disturbed he asked the pujaris and the pujari said we don't know we don't know then he asked the ministers and the ministers said how do we know because only this vaishnavas are hanging in this place from morning to night maybe one of them might have stolen that you know the ministers wanted to put the blame on the vaishnavas so that the king will send out these vaishnavas send them out this was their original plan and the minister said how do we know maybe one of the vaishnavas had taken it you know we were telling them not to allow these people too much then the ministers blamed vaishnavas raja kulashekra became very upset he said vaishnavas will never steal then minister said then who else nobody else is there in the temple only vaishnavas are there they must have taken it then maharaja kulashekra said if at all vaishnavas had taken it there must be some genuine reason anyway i will take that punishment on behalf of them and he said that and he brought a, he asked his men to brought a pot with a narrow neck a pot with a narrow neck and they dropped a poisonous viper inside cobra snake inside and raja kulashekra dropped his hand inside and said if that if vaishnavas had taken the necklace i will suffer the punishment i will suffer the sin on behalf of them let the snake bite me and he pushed his hand inside the pot the ministers never expected this they started trembling they felt very bad they begged again and said sorry 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 we only took the mala you know uh, we wanted to chase these people away we never knew that you will do this you will take such a extreme decision please forgive us we only you know the ministers begged the forgiveness and the king very lovingly asked why are you so much troubled the minister said you are spending all the time for bhakti you are not attending to the country's affairs how the country will be managed then kulashekra maharaja said lokasya vyasana apanodana karo dasasya kim nakshama if my lord can maintain 14 planetary systems so beautifully he can't maintain his servants kingdom is that so difficult for my lord simply you believe but still the ministers were not convinced so raja maharaja kulashekra did the amazing thing he gave up the kingdom on the very same day he gave up the kingdom and told the ministers you manage it and maharaja kulashekra became took sanyas renunciation then he traveled to shrirangam 
and rest of his life he was serving ranganath ji and spending time amazing king and the king you know raja kulashekara he established so many so many beautiful systems in this temple wonderful the way of worship and and uh, if we read that mukundamala stotra book we will know we can understand the level of devotion maharaja kulashekara had then when you circumambulate the temple then we will see beautiful narsingh dev deity yoga narsingh you know and the yoga narsimha form is very very rare mostly we see lakshmi narsimha or varah narsimha or prahlad vard narsimha these are the deities we mostly see but here we have yoga narsimha lord narsingh dev sitting on a yoga posture you know sitting on a yoga posture and there is a beautiful thing when one of the kings not raja kulashekara another king and all these kings were wonderfully devoted to lord ananta padmanabh ji they were very hard and very sincere devotees so his enemy somehow bribed the pujari of narsingh dev and they said to the pujari when the king comes for darshan and he will ask for charnamrita charnatirtha you know mix poison in that and feed him and the pujari took bribe from the enemies of the king and one day he mixed poison in charnamrit and he served charnamrit to the king the king took three sips of charnamrit and chant narsingh dev's mantra he sang the songs of narsingh dev and prayed and the pujari right in front of narsingh dev fell down dead law you know the king had charna poison but the pujari was killed pujari fell down dead right in front of narsingh dev so you know the narsingh dev is his eyes are like bluish color very fearsome and very beautiful 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 deity on the right hand side of uh, anant padmanabh ji so it's like you know anant padmanabh ji in center one side we have krishna temple another side we have narsingh dev and in one corner is raja kulashekara's uh, lord ramachandra then the parikrama marg parikrama marg is so big so beautiful you know and every day morning even today the king the prince will come for darshan you know the temple is not under government the temple is still under the royal family it's under the palace they are still maintaining the temple and they have a wonderful system you know they have they have their crown and the crown has got two shoes anant padmanabh ji shoes on the crown so the system originally was the king used to come in the morning and in the night to temple morning he will come take the crown the crown was kept inside a sanctum inside the, the deity room next to the lord with the shoes and in the morning the king will come pay his obeisances and he will take the crown and wear it on top of his head then he will go to manage the country then evening he will come give a full report what has happened in the day and leave the crown back in the temple and he will go and all the kings in trivandrum they got this surname shri padmanabha dasa martanda varma shri padmanabha dasa balarama varma you know they all had this uh, prefix shri padmanabha das they you know every king is known by that name shri padmanabha das and their crown had two big shoes of anant padmanabh ji you know they wear their crown manage the country and bring back and if one day if at all the king was sick and uh, he didn't uh, he couldn't pay attention he couldn't pay his pranams to anant padmanabh ji next day he will come and pay a fine he pay one gold coin fine you know so here, somehow the system has diluted now now they pay you know some money as fine earlier it was like one gold coin fine but even now if the king doesn't come every day he will pay fine to anand padmanabh ji pay a fine 
and he say uh, sorry i couldn't come yesterday i was sick or something like that very very personal worship very personal worship and from anant padmanabh ji when we come out of the city you know i told you earlier the whole city is named under lord vishnu where originally anand padmanabh ji's head was there the 18 mile long deity that place is tiruvallam you know it is under shri vallabha then the lotus feet is tripadapuram where you can today see lotus feet and there are many many towns so from anand padmanabh ji temple 10 kilometers towards south there is a small village called neyatinkara little difficult to pronounce neyatinkara which simply means riverside you know it means riverside so in riverside there is a tiny beautiful krishna temple so one day this king you know um, his enemies attacked him and somehow he lost in the battle the king of travancore lost in the battle and the enemies were chasing the king and king was all alone and there were like 18 soldiers chasing the king on horses so when he came to that particular village krishna actually appeared there and told the king you know you please go inside there, there was a huge banyan tree and in the banyan tree there was something like a burrow there was like a hole so he told the king to get inside that tree's hole krishna told him and uh, the king got inside the tree's hole and krishna told the soldiers who were chasing the king you know he showed a wrong direction and told the soldiers to go in a different direction even today you go to this village you can see the tree the tree with a very huge burrow it's kind of a huge hole where a person can walk in you know the tree is still there and it is preserved amazing amazing past times have happened in anant padmanabh ji you know so many past times and one interesting past time is some 80 kilometers from trivandrum is cape comorin kanyakumari and near to that place is a nambi koil nambi means student in sri sampradaya nambi means student the deity is called student amazing past time ramanujacharya with his 10000 disciples went to the temple you know you know ramanujacharya had thousands and thousands of disciples and he was teaching and the deity asked ramanujacharya ho oh, acharya when i came and spoke bhagavad gita very few people listened and followed you know i could not influence so many people when i spoke bhagavad gita i had only one student arjuna then very few handful of people followed bhagavad gita and all this spirituality how come you are able to influence tens and thousands of students then ramanujacharya smiled and said my lord if you want to know the secret you should become my student otherwise you know you i won't teach you. so ramanujacharya cracked a joke to the lord if you want to know the secret you should become my student but ramanujacharya totally forgot about it but actually lord vishnu became a student of ramanujacharya one day a brilliant glowing tejasvi brahman boy came in front of ramanujacharya and said i wanted to be your student ramanuja saw the beauty of this boy captivated by this beauty and glowing radiance ramanujacharya said yes okay join and this boy was always carrying the bags of ramanujacharya his sleeping mat on his head because they used to carry these things from one place to another ramanujacharya's water pot you know a mat his sleeping materials his book bag he was carrying and running in front of ramanujacharya from village to village to village to village and when ramanujacharya came to trivandrum this student also came who is none other than the supreme lord so when ramanujacharya stayed here in trivandrum he was teaching to all his disciples including the lord so that beautiful past time also happened in shri anant padmanabh ji mandir you know so that is there 
Then, right in front of Anant Padmanabh Ji Mandir, there is an ashram called Abheda Ananda Ashram. Amazing. In this ashram, right from 1955, chanting if the holy name is going on, unbroken. From 1955, almost like uh, 65 years now, day and night, like in Vrindavan, Iskon, Hare Krishna Mandir, we see this Akhandana, 24 hours Kirtan, you know, going on for last uh, 10, 20 years in Iskon. Same way for last 65 years, 24 hours Kirtan is going on in this ashram. And in 1955, that Swamiji Abedananda, he was worshipping Gormitai. He has a Gormitai picture and he worshipped that. Very strange because nobody knew about Gormitai in South India in 1950s and 40s. This sage was worshipping. So, actually when Lord Chaitanya came to Anantapadmanabh Ji Mandir, he took a bath in the huge pond in front of the temple. In the front of the temple, there's a huge, very big pond. You know, Lord Chaitanya took bath in the pond and he went to this particular place where now Abedanda Ashram is there. And there was a huge banyan tree. So Mahaprabhu sat down under the banyan tree and chanted the holy name. The influence of that Leela, even today, People are chanting holy name from 1955. You have, to, you have to book your name. You have to register your name. And days are booked. They will tell it's booked for next four months. You come in next July. That's how they give date, you know. So one person comes. He takes a veena. And one hour he chants, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare. One hour. And nobody should keep the veena down. And exactly the next re register person will come and we'll be waiting. And very respectfully, obediently, he will receive the veena and he will continue chanting day and night. And if you want to chant, you have to register your name and you will get only after four or five months. So the chanting of the holy name is going on. And amazing. And one more interesting thing is, Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur came to Trivandrum and he was the royal guest of the palace. You know, he became a guest of the royal palace and he came and gave lectures in uh, the main town hall built by Britishers. The town hall is in the center of Trivandrum. It's called Victoria Jubilee Town Hall. Something which looks like, you know, railway station in Mumbai, very ornated and gigantic. So in that, Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur gave a talk. He stayed for two weeks in Trivandrum and completed a book also. He was a royal guest. And a very sweet thing is, Iskon was able to establish Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lotus feet inside Anantapadmanam Ji Mandir. Like um, you can see Lord Chaitanya's lotus feet in Udipi, in Sri Rangam, in Dwarka, in uh, Jagannath Puri. That's all established outside the temple. But here, the king gave permission to ISKCON devotees. So ISKCON devotees, headed by um, many, many Maharajas, uh, His Holiness Shubhad Swami Maharaj, His Holiness Banu Swami Maharaj, His Holiness Jayapataka Swami Maharaj, in 1998, Many Prabhupada disciples, they had the honor of uh, installing the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya inside Anantapadmanabh Ji Mandir. So it's a beautiful, holy place. We request devotees to make a visit, have darshan, and take blessings from the Lord. Anantapadmanabh Ji Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Ananta Koti Vaishnavrinda Ki Jai. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.
आरजी मीडिया यूट्यूब चैनल लाइक शेयर सब्सक्राइब